Bonjour and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about the French League 2. Now this league can be by far one of the most fun road to glories you can actually do in FIFA. It might not be as far down that you're starting as for example the English 4th Division or the German 3rd Division, but despite being the second tier, there is actually still quite a lot of progression you'll need to do to get to the height of someone like a PSG, a Monaco or a Lyon. In this video, I'll be helping you to keep your road to glory realistic. So I'll be giving you the league's squad rules, where to scout to keep your academy nationalities realistic, what kind of player ratings you want to avoid signing someone over to keep your team realistic and challenging, and then I'll be giving you a quick rundown of which team you want to be starting at if you want to start off with one of the better teams, if you want a historic giant who's in the league, or if you want a road to glory team who's right at the bottom of the pyramid. If you want to make sure you're getting the rules correctly, check out my website in the link below, go onto the league section and you'll be able to read most of the content in this video, although not all of it, so make sure you do watch the rest of the video. But it's got the squad rules, scouting locations, what player ratings and what kind of tiers each team is in. So do check that out and please do consider either subscribing or becoming a channel member because they'll both support me to keep making videos like this throughout FIFA 22. Anyway, let's get started as always with the league's squad rules. Compared to some other leagues, they've actually got very simple rules. Maximum squad size of 99 doesn't really apply to FIFA because I think the most players you can have is actually 52-ish. Maximum of 5 loan players, again not a lot of FIFA players actually do use loans but keep an eye on that if you are going to try and get some free players on loan from someone like PSG. Maximum of 2 non-EU players will probably be the toughest one although do consider quite a lot of the African nationality players in the league will also be French born. And then finally a minimum age of 16 years old to play in the league. This will only be a problem if you're playing a modded PC and you've set your youth academy to produce 14 and 15 year olds whereas I think default FIFA is just 16 to 18 year olds so keep an eye on that if you're on modded FIFA. But out of all the rules the only one you really need to think about is keeping the two non-EU players while you're in League 2. This rule does expand and check out the League 1 video when you do get promoted so you should be able to fill your squad with non-EU players as soon as you are promoted. So that's the rules, now let's get on to how to keep your academy realistic. So the aim of this is to make sure you're not getting players through who are too highly rated, although France does have a really good record of bringing through young players at the moment, but it's also to try and keep the nationality balance of your team fairly realistic. Now if you're on FIFA PC, I would recommend modding it so that you can scout France twice and then one of Senegal, Algeria, Benin if you're on PC, not available on console, same with Comoros. Mali I think is available on console but I'm not 100% sure, Ivory Coast, Cameroon, Morocco, Congo, Belgium, Netherlands and Sweden. A list of all of these as I mentioned before is on my website so don't worry if you missed the list and you want to go back in the video just check out the website they're all written down so you can go and have a look at them whenever you please. Now this is fairly easy actually because this is the order of the nationalities that are most common actually in the league to start off with. France is obviously the most common, but Senegal and Algeria actually make up over 10% of the other players in the league. Benin is another big one and that's very surprising because that's actually a very small nation, but they still make up 2 or 3% of that entire league with their second nationality. If you're wanting to keep your academy fully realistic, you shouldn't really have any players with more than 80 to 85 potential. While there hasn't been that many 90 plus potential players coming out of the league in real life, the two most obvious choices for big talents coming from League 2 being Riyad Mahrez and N'Golo Kante who are both in the high 80s in real life. There's also been players who have gone to the Bundesliga like Ibrahima Kanate who's now at Liverpool, Deot Upakamano who's now in the Bundesliga and Silas Mvumpa who played for Paris FC. So don't consider throwing away all your high rated talent but maybe keep it to one or two players every single season who are coming through with over 80 potential. Moving away from the academy into actual signings, if you want to keep it realistic, you're going to have a pretty small window of opportunity for overall rating players that you should be signing. For example, promotion teams are on average 68 overall, playoff teams are 67, the mid table teams are 66 and the relegation tier players are about 65 overall. This is a really small gap compared to some of the other leagues. For example the Premier League you might have a 75 rated player as a relegation team and then 90 rated players as someone who really thinks they're going to win the league. This highlights the competitiveness of the French second division and why it's so hard to actually get out of even in FIFA. You can go all out and you can buy these insane players who are sort of high 70 rated players in this league, thrash it through the league but I'm not sure that's so realistic. 
So I would try and keep my player signings to 70 overall at the very best, just to keep it a bit more challenging and make it a harder and more enjoyable journey to the top of the French pyramid. So you know the rules, you know what kind of players you'll be signing, how your academy is going to work, but which team should you start off? Well, as always, the choice is yours, but I've split the league into four big groups. We've got the better quality teams, best of the rest, the historic older teams with a bit more glory in the past, and then the worst teams in the league, who are also the worst teams in France, of course, where you're going to have a road to glory opportunity. So the better quality teams, you've probably heard of these, Toulouse, Troyes and Auxerre. Auxerre and Toulouse have been in the top flight very recently, Troyes a little bit further back. So they've all had experience in the top division, they're just sort of having a slump at the moment where they've actually been relegated down to the second tier. They still have some players who are actually first division ready, first division potential or first division current ability. So you're going to have a lot easier of a time getting promoted with these teams. Most of the time, if you sign one or two players with them, you'll be able to storm the league, especially if you get someone with a bit of pace up front, which I think they're all lacking. If you want an easy experience of this league, go for Toulouse, Troyes or Auxerre. The next tier of teams have maybe a bit of a weakness in one area, or they need two or three signings in key positions that are going to get them to the top of the league. So this is Amiens, Guingamp and Kien. Now, all of these teams, again, like I said, do need a little bit of strengthening, but they do have some very good players in their team still. If you want a team with high potential, I'd go for Stad Cayenne. You have people like Becker Becker, who's a central defensive midfielder with a lot of potential, Unsona, who's a winger, again, with a lot of potential, and Jesse Deminguet, who's a defensive midfielder who's going to be pretty good. If you're into American football, like me as well, they also have an American striker, Gio Accini, who's got potential to be one of the better players in the league by quite a distance. Guingamp is the team you go for if you want the team that's already there, although they do have quite a lot of older players. There's not too much potential in there either, so you're going to have to buy some younger players if you don't get promoted after the first season. Amiens is the team that you go for if you just like pace. They've got a very fast front three, and of course, there's always going to be potential to add some lower rated players with even more pace in every position. I think they're probably the easiest of these three teams to go up with, so give them a go if you're confused of which team to go with. The third set of teams are the historic teams, so these are teams with bigger histories or histories of having good youth academies. So, Sochoa and La Havre are both known for having very good youth academies. La Havre famously produced Paul Pogba before he went to Manchester United, and Sochoa have produced some very good players as well, like Cedric Bakambu, who you probably know from FIFA, Jeremy Mathieu, who was very good on one FIFA as well, Jeremy Menez, who of course used to play for PSG, and even Perisic even started off there as well. So you've got good history in producing players. If you're going for a youth academy only save, go for Sochoa. Finally, we've got the Road to Glory teams, so these are the ones that are very hard to get up the league. They start off with the worst squads, or tiny stadiums, or tiny budgets. So we've got Chambly, Pau, and Rodez. Now Rodez actually start off with a stadium that only seats 2,000 people. This is lower than my Division 11 club that I live near in England. That's how small this team actually is, and it's just proof that their rise to the second division is actually pretty monumental for a club of that size. But still, this stadium is twice the size that Chambly have. Now, Chambly is a tiny village next to Paris. They only seat 1,000 seats, and they've only been promoted in the last couple of seasons. They've got a very interesting kit, cool history as well if you check that out on Wikipedia, and of course, you could even do a one-way rivalry with PSG if you do make it to the French top division. The final team that I'd recommend having a look at is Pau FC. Now the interesting thing about these guys is they're actually technically in the French Basque region. They're one of the only teams in France that actually qualifies for this. You could arguably say Bordeaux are as well, but I wouldn't go that far. So you could consider doing something like the Basque Challenge from Bilbao while playing as Pau. I think this is definitely worth a go, very interesting challenge, and I honestly would love to hear if you do give this a go. If you want to see more information on how to do a Basque challenge, please do check out my video on Bilbao that's on the channel already. It goes into depth on why they do Basque only, what it means, how to do it, and why it's a fun challenge. So check that out if you're interested in doing a POW FC Basque only challenge. But anyway, that's it. I hopefully you've learned quite a lot about the French second division. I know I have from researching while making this. I didn't quite realize the extent of African players in the league. I do hope you give this league a go because I haven't actually seen that many FIFA Road to Glories from the French 2nd Division on either the Reddit FIFA careers 
Discord or Twitter. So please do let everybody know if you give this a challenge by posting on one of them so we can all share in your success. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more league guides getting ready for FIFA 22. If you do give any of these teams go, like I said, drop it in the comments, love to hear about it, or join my Discord where the link is in the description below. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Check out my website if you want to read all this after the video is finished, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you all for watching, and goodbye.